The Lakers Nation Philippines Podcast. Hey there, it's Charlie here with the Lakers Nation Philippines Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I wanted to actually record the episode right after the second Pelicans win when Anthony Davis played 20 minutes. But what I'm learning is with, with, with this Lakers team, by the way, this podcast episode is being recorded right after the Phoenix Suns loss. And we'll get to that in, in a little bit. What I've learned is this this Lakers team, they game up for bigger opponents. And when it comes to playing to smaller opponents, they, they play down. And, and that's great and fun and everything. But you know what? This team does not have the capability of being a Popovich Spurs uh, 2010s type team or even the the uh, 2000s era type team, okay? That's where LeBron's influence is coming in to where, you know, he's a champion. He's labeled as one of the top five players ever to play. And he can't do that with this, with this team. And, he, you know, we, we've talked to death, albeit in the Lakers Nation Philippines blog or any other forum that you belong to about the kids and how much they still need to learn. But in this particular case, uh, they're applying this type of uh, math that doesn't apply to this crew, okay? I mean, you look at this topsy-turvy outlook on LeBron. I like the guy because he'll open up a school for the youth. But then again, the youth and his team, he'll uh, say something that will burn a bridge, and there's there's certain things that LeBron says that does make sense, but it gets misinterpreted. Classic example, whenever he says something like the team isn't used to winning, it is true. I think that was overblown and, and the fodder became maniacal for basketball media. But at the same time, it, you, you do the same thing that what Kobe Bryant did in his last four years. I remember used to being so frustrated with Kobe Bryant when he would play Trevor Ariza when he was playing with the Wizards, and he would clearly just leave him open. And, and that's his former teammate, and he knows Trevor Ariza is integral to to the championship years, the the second round, at least that first championship ring with Paul with Paul Gasol, who by the way is with the Bucks, and I wish he would have signed with the Lakers. So we are in the twilight end of LeBron's career in basketball. And the one thing that, and I hate to interplay this into this episode, I'm not going to be playing any audio bits. I'm not going to be quoting much or if anything, I'm just going to be reading stats. This is just, this is just a personal podcast episode in regards to LeBron James and, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Regarding LeBron James... I mentioned on the last podcast that this is a clutch mob. This is a mafia. This is a, a, a gigantic posse in the spirit of group trying to take over. And with, with LeBron James, you're on HBO. You're on Showtime. Shut Up and Dribble is, is the, uh, the other project that's on Showtime. And then you have The Shop on HBO. It's almost starting to feel like the same way if you guys are a UFC fan, like Tyron Woodley, you know, he started a rap career and guess what? He lost his belt. Ronda Rousey, same thing. A lot of people in boxing, they think Manny Pacquiao. You know, if he just concentrated on just being a boxer instead of being a politician, maybe he would have been one of the all-time greats right up there. And that's how I feel with, with what's happening with LeBron. You know, because now it, it's, it's somewhat of this corporate partnership, right? It's the Lakers and the Clutch Mob. And then there isn't much say or complete say on the Lakers. End. And, and that, to me, is uh, absolutely unhealthy. In, in the very beginning, I, I thought, yeah, this is going to be great. LeBron's going to be listening to Magic, Rob Palenka, and Jeannie Buss. Nope, that's not the case. That is not the case. So with LeBron, I'm going to give him a pass on this season, primarily because he was injured. And it looks like he's playing his ass off. I mean, recently we just saw him do a step back three. 
he beat up uh, Drew Holiday. And also, that shows that there is effort when he needs it to be there. You know, but 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 not to make this a LeBron centric bashing of an episode, but he's the leader. Yeah, you're considered the GOAT. So guess what? Comes with the territory, right? I, I was harsh on Shaquille O'Neal. I was harsh on Kobe Bryant. As far as from my opinion at least. You know, but I was the guy that defended Shaquille O'Neal against uh anti Laker crazy maniacs out there. I was the one who defended Kobe, though it seemed like I was a Kobe basher, but I defended Kobe intensely against Celtic fans or whoever is vitriolic towards the Lakers. The the other topic I wanted to move forward to also is primarily it's the veterans. I mean, everyone has said this, right? You know, you you have knuckleheads like Lance Stevenson, uh, Rajon Rondo can't shoot threes. Apparently he can now. And then you got Michael Beasley and then JaVel McGee. I mean, these these short-termers, these short-termers uh, sign one-year deal cats, uh, their net efficiency is all over the map. And as, as of recent, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read what they have as far as for their ratings. LeBron James is a top of the heap. He's a plus 7.5. Josh Hart, this actually dropped as far as for his net rating, but he's at a 5.9 because he has a knee injury. Kyle Kuzma's at a plus two. Lonzo Balls is is at a plus 1.3. Brandon Ingram is actually in the black now at 0.07 or 0.7. And then you got KCP, JaVale McGee, Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson. KCP, minus 4.4. JaVale McGee, minus 4.5. The guards, Rajon Rondo, minus 5.1. Lance Stevenson, minus 5.7. So what does that tell you? Uh, The team is fractured and the vets aren't being veterans. You know, they're supposed to help out the kids, but but they're not. You know, granted, Rondo was the difference. And then he and KCP blew critical plays. The other thing that is weirding me out with the Los Angeles Lakers are the medical updates. I remember George Sedano stating that it's only going to be Nine days at the most when LeBron pulled his groin. And look how long that took. 18 games? And this whole Lonzo thing, it's prototypical with his type of injury where you don't play for 12 to 16 weeks. And I don't know where they got the four to six weeks from. You know, this is just one of those heavy, opinionated, passionate Laker fan pods For the Lakers Nation podcast. It's a frustrating season. You know, I'm 43 years old. I should be used to it, but I'm not. It's the Lakers, right? This is what we have. I also wanted to talk about JaVale McGee because I I personally feel JaVale McGee's a spoiled brat. Remember when he thought he was being attacked with the Shaqton and the Fool um, repeats? His repeat appearances. But you know what, JaVale? Don't be a terrible player. And you won't be featured. I don't know if it's, if, he, if he's being a softy millennial. I don't know if he's just, you know, uh, how I, I don't know how affluent or, or how poor he was raised. But you know what? He is acting a little privileged. And then with the rumors, or I don't know if it actually is a fact, that JaVale was having a hard time with Zubats taking more minutes. And he was the last guy we needed to trade. Because we needed a rotation of three centers. JaVale, we ran this dude to the ground to where he got pneumonia. So it's better for him to go back to playing 15 to 20 minutes. Tyson Chandler, he's a 10 to 12 minute a guy during a game. And then now Zubats could have taken the rest of the minutes. So let's say if Zubats played 15, JaVale played 15, Tyson Chandler played 12, and then you have like another six minutes for whoever else to play center if you want to go small ball with LeBron. But that's what's frustrating with the front office. Right now, I don't want to rehash everything else, but the most recent one is this Zubats trade. I don't get it. If you trade for Mascala, okay, he was injured, but you know what? You're not playing him anyways. And that also falls into the categorical... Blaming of Luke Walton. He still has 
why he he still has a lot of failures in the sense of rotations or even why are you having KCP do that inbound play that was a critical mistake I I feel like someone like Brandon Ingram and also Kyle Kuzma they're, they're doing really well uh in my opinion these guys you do not want to flip these guys in the summer What the front office should be doing is concentrating on signing a really good player. Now, do I want someone like Jimmy Butler? No. I'd rather have KD, but he's going to New York. It's really obvious, guys. He moves it. He moved his operations to New York. I bet you he's he's already setting shop as we speak in regards for residential issues for New York. So KD would have been great, but I don't think he's coming. Kawhi, we don't know. Maybe he just prefers to stay in Toronto, or if not, he prefers to play for the Clippers versus playing for the Lakers, albeit being LeBron or the pressure. I like Kyrie. It seems like Kyrie right now is in the doghouse, almost equivocally the way LeBron is for selling out his teammates, his young teammates. And then if, if, if with the rumors of Tyron Lu who is uh, supposed to be replacing Luke Walton, then you know what? Maybe for one or two years, let, let's let's do it. Let's try and win and win in the next two years. But you keep Brandon Ingram. You keep Kyle Kuzma. And maybe even Lonzo you keep. Do not flip these guys for Anthony Davis. I used to advocate for that. But you know what? Anthony Davis is a great player on a shit team. I like Kyrie because he's played with LeBron and LeBron needs to be with with a wing. No, no, no. A guard that can create his own shot and be a fourth quarter person. As you can tell, this this Phoenix Suns games, there were two critical plays that were, were henching on the playoff hopes. One it, it is LeBron's two free throws, which he missed, What, which is why I don't think LeBron is a... He's a... Three and a half or three and three quarter guy. When it comes to the last four minutes or the final two, three plays, he's not that guy. He's not that guy anymore, guys. It, it, it's one of those risky, almost J.R. Smith type makers. He's great for the first three, three and three quarters. Kind of like when Shaq played with Kobe. Shaq handled his business, but you know what? Who closed? Kobe Bryant. Shaq, Shaq played defense. He'd get a lob of Kobe. Or he'd grab a rebound. But Kobe was the designated closer. And LeBron can close with D-Wade or Kyrie Irving. Worst comes to worst, maybe you sign a Jimmy Butler. But at at that point, in in terms of championship and branding for the Lakers, they're just trying to stay afloat now and relevant so that way they can be in the playoffs. But as far as for championship, do you think... LeBron and Jimmy Buckets can make it happen? Maybe. But it's just... It, it, Jimmy Jimmy Butler's a headache. Klay Thompson's great, but I still feel with LeBron, you need a guard that can create, penetrate, pass. I like the signing of Reggie Bullock. That's a good one. You should have just released Michael Beasley and kept Zubats. And, and, and I, I told... Probably four people, you know, two good friends and two people on Instagram. No, actually one good friend on Instagram and another person on Instagram. I was like, you know what? This is at 30 and and 28 games. Between 30 and 28 games, I was like, you know what? This team isn't going to make it because they're way too inconsistent. They're way too inconsistent. Classic example during the Bucks game, which I thought we were there. I thought we were there. You know, like Brandon Ingram, he was doing really well. But they went away from him during the fourth quarter, which I don't understand. I, I, I'm, I'm frustrated because now I can look at the pro look, boo Luke, boot him out. I, I can see that. Anyways, he, he's out of here anyways. I mean, you can see it in his face. He would be stupid if he didn't know. And then you can also blame the front office. I don't want to rehash who we signed, but 
damn, just J- JaVel McGee as the center? These guys who can't shoot? We, we already know the formula with LeBron. You need, the, you need okay, the, the recoup of Reggie Bullock, perfect. But the signing of Rajon Rondo, who's been injured already? You're better off with having someone like Lou Will and Jamal Crawford. Since Lonzo was supposed to be the starting point guard anyways. So this is one of those episodes that um, not even in the spirit of trying to be like a professional podcaster that or broadcaster that's been on satellite radio dash radio. But this is more of a rant and release. I'm sure a lot of you Laker fans out there feel the same way, at least with some certain portions of my points, right? But if I were you guys, I I would hope just for everyone to heal up and and remove your playoff hopes. I I don't think we're going to make it, guys. I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer, but that's just the reality, and that's what we got to eat. The one thing to to cap it off with something positive is if you look at, like, the Bucks game, we were right there. We were right there. A couple of bobbled plays, but you know what? We were right there. You know those those games where we lost to like Orlando? You know Orlando has actually beat a lot of great teams. And I think it's a it's an issue of people taking them for granted. The teams that we should have beat like you know Phoenix, Memphis, the Pelicans without Anthony Davis. You know that that was an effort issue. It's the fracturing of the team. And I hope we get this other giant reset. Come playoff time, which we won't be uh, in, in my opinion. But come free agency, you know, uh, let's let's map this out properly. You want Ty Lue, LeBron? Okay, cool. You want to sign Kyrie Irving? Cool. Let's keep everyone else. Maybe you flip one person. I'll be whether if it's LeBron for a, a, and and a pick, since we're going to be in the in the lottery anyways. You 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 flip. Did I say LeBron? Freudian slip. You flip someone like Lonzo in a pick for like a Chris Middleton. Since you have Kyrie coming in. Something like that. But this is just a frustrated Laker fan producing a pod for you. Anyways, but this team is dope, man. It's so fun to watch. Till, till the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. This team is fun to watch. Brandon Ingram is a gangster. And then who's next? It's Kyle Kuzma. And they're learning how to play with LeBron. But imagine if you have Kyrie at the point, Lonzo at the two, Brandon Ingram at the three, Kyle Kuzma at the four, Bron at the five if you want to go small ball. I think that could work. So it's still fun to watch, but I watch it now in the spirit of what's next, what's to come in the open market. In the free agency, right? So, j- just take this as data. I'm just as frustrated as you. But I love the Lakers. And, and there's, there's, there's quarters and plays that you know this team could be magnificent. Anyways, that's it for a quick rant for you Laker fans. Signing off, it's Charlie with the Lakers Nation Philippines podcast. Thank you.